Hey, welcome to another episode of the TDC Insider Podcast. I'm Brian Royce, to your host. And today I'm going to interview David Ferry, Anson Belt and Buckle co-founder and CEO. Anson Belt has done over $30 million in direct-to-consumer sales of belts, just belts, all online. He has been in e-commerce for going on 15 years and has built the business alongside his father after discovering the concept in 2006. Anson Belt made Inc. 5,000 fastest growing privately owned companies three years in a row, not one, three years in a row, the lowest being 589. And I would love to know more about that in a sec. But before doing so, let me tell you that this episode is, going, is brought to you by BSR Digital. By now, I'm sure most of you know that customer acquisition costs are going up. There's lack of tracking and attribution is probably driving you nuts. And the audience sizes are getting smaller and smaller after the iOS 14 update. If that wasn't enough, there are other factors such as the recession and supply chain issues making it harder than ever to grow your e-commerce brand. That's why we need to understand that it's really important to level up the marketing and design a solid strategy as what used to work doesn't anymore. Here at BSR Digital, we have been helping countless e-commerce brands that wanted to scale their business to a next level for paid ads and email marketing for over a decade. So if you want to learn more about us, visit bsrdigital.com and you can also email us at hello at bsrdigital.com. Now, as promised, I have David here with me. Hey, man, thanks for being on the show. Absolutely, Brian. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And I have someone to thank about uh, this introduction, and that's uh, Matthew Stafford at Bill Grow Scale. So, Matt, if you're listening, a big thank you to you for the intro. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. Matt's a, a great partner of ours. So, yes, uh, and, and a good friend. So, yes, thank you so much. Yeah, he's awesome. So, David, I mean, in the intro, I, I mentioned many cool things about you and the company. So I would love yeah. for you to introduce yourself and tell the audience more about your background and, and what the company does as well. Absolutely. Well, and again, thank you so much for having us on. Um, you know, as you mentioned in the intro, we are a, uh, a belt company. We sell a micro adjustable holeless belt. So instead of five inches, uh, one, you know, or five spaces, one inch apart, like most traditional belts, our belt has 30 plus options a quarter of an inch apart. So you're able to get the perfect fit every time. And I don't know if your audience can see this, if they're you know watching uh, on video at all, you can kind of see the track system there and it interacts with a special buckle that uh, as the track slides across, it catches on the track system. So it gives you the perfect fit every time. And since you don't have the holes getting worn out, it stays looking newer for much, much, much longer. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the gist of the belt. Uh, as you mentioned, discovered it in 2006. The concept is actually it has been around for 50 plus years in Asia and Eastern Europe. Uh, but when my father discovered it in 2006, he had never heard of it. And, and then when he got back home, he asked everybody he knew, you know, can you find me some more of these belts? Where, you know, have you seen anything like this? Where can I get more? And he couldn't find them anywhere. So, um, you know, after digging and digging online and back then, you really the search terms weren't popping up for holeless belts. You know, we didn't even know what to call it. And, and it turns out. Uh, it was being called a ratchet style belt, um, you know, which makes sense because it kind of works like a ratcheting kind of, um, you know, ratcheting pulley system. So it, uh, you know, that's what they were calling them. And, and there's two companies that were ba around back then have since dissolved. Um, and, and the listeners today may be familiar with this type of belt because they are honestly, the market has been absolutely flooded in the last, you know, I'd say six for sure. But, you know, even in the last 10 um, with this style of belt. And so we knew that day was coming, you know, when we first discovered it, we said, you know, where can we find more? And, and we wanted to, to, you know, to have some ourselves. So we said, all right, let's start selling these. You know, my father's always been a, an entrepreneur and, and he approached me and, you know, wanted me to, to help him start this business. So I took it on and, uh, you know, and really has, uh, you know, been, been our baby, uh, ever since that, that we created and, um, and built the brand up. Um, so, you know, Fast forward today, you know, there's a lot of competitors out there, but really what sets us apart are, uh, you know, a lot of things that we changed. We saw some things with that first belt that and, and buckle that we didn't really like, made some improvements there that a lot of the other companies that have come across, you know, in the last few years that, that didn't really make those efforts. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we also have a lifetime guarantee on the, the functionality um, and, and thousands of possible combinations just to choose from. So, yeah. I mean... It just makes sense, right? I, I don't know how many times I remember finding myself making new holes to the to the existing, you know, belt because it didn't fit. Absolutely. Or I didn't. So it's it makes sense. 
So I, I have a question for you, and I would love the audience to pay attention to this because I think this is important, is how do you, you know, separate your company from your competitors? How do you stand out from your competitors? Because you, you're mm -hmm. selling a belt. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but you're selling a belt, right? So mm -hmm. one thing is to get some success and some momentum uh, because of what he said. Hey, we knew this day would come in which we would have more competitors selling more or less the same mm -hmm. products, but... How do you turn that into an Inc. 5000 company, for example? What's the, yeah. the journey that, you, that you've been through there? Yeah, so, you know, for me, I, I think that a lot of it has to do with our customer service and, and, and the attention that we've given to our customer service. You know, I, I still today, um, you know, one of our guys is actually, he, he's off today. So I'm, I'm checking in on tickets. I'm still handling tickets. And, you know, as the CEO, as the, as the owner, uh, you know, I, I'm still very, very active in that role. I still answer the phone. I still, you know, love to speak with our customers. So, you know, I think that that has really made more of an impact than you can ever measure. And it's really tough to measure that. But, um, you know, I think that every time that I get to speak with the customer and now they've become a huge fan and then they go and tell their friends and then they go buy it as a gift and then they buy it as a gift. And then it's just kind of, uh, you know, that snowball effect of, of just, you know, providing good service and, and a quality product and then backing that quality product with the guarantee that, you know, has no fine, you know, no fine print, no strings attached. We just want you to always be in a working Anson belt. And so if you're not, we'll make sure that you are. So, um, so yeah, I, I think that that's one of the things that, that definitely sets us apart is that attention. I don't think that a lot of, uh, you know, the other, a lot of companies that you can find, you know, similar style belts that, you know, you'll, you'll reach the owner on the first call. So, um, you know, that sets us apart in, in my mind. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest, you know, to me, the, the, the quality and the customer service, um, are you know two of the biggest reasons why we've lasted as long as we have. What's the main difference between the team that you used to have back then and the team that you have right now? I mean, because <laughs> scaling a brand from scratch to thirty million plus, I mean, yeah, it requires. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. So you know, I in the beginning it was my father and I, you know, and 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 really, um, and then a hodgepodge of of just friends that I knew that did things from graphic design to photography to. Uh, web design and, and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, linked up with some, some strategic partners, um, you know, like Matt uh, and, and his team and, and you know, have really been able to find um, great partners that help us with the really hard stuff and, and the stuff that I need experts for, like the web design um, and, and like the paid media and stuff like that. So, you know, linking up with people and, and teams that can really handle th those, you know, ex the, the expertise parts that, that, I, that I can't and that would be really expensive for us to hire, you know, someone in-house, you know, an expert like that to be able to, you know, to be on all the time and then to make sure that they have enough to do, you know, it really just didn't warrant hiring someone on this. So you have to find good partners. Uh, and that was really key for us. So the big difference between, you know, then and now, you know, then it was my father and I, um, you know, now we I have two of my best friends that I've hired on. Um, one is it's kind of my, my right-hand man that's here, um, you know, in my office. Uh, and then another works customer service and, and really, handles the whole customer service end of that, uh, as well as another lady that handles customer service um, uh, for us in, in evenings and in weekends. And, and so we're always trying to be covered, always want to make sure that, that you hear back from us. So, um, you know, we, we have a lot of strategic partners, but a very small internal team. So, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to believe that we do some of the things we do with, with the team that we do. But, um, but I think when you have those strategic partners helping, along with a good core team that really, um, you know, just does an incredible job, you can do some big things. So. Yeah. So uh, as we have been discussing the show uh, in the last, I don't know how many episodes ever since COVID, I mean, the last few years were definitely different, interesting, right? And challenging Absolutely. for many Absolutely. brands. Full of opportunities. Very, so. very challenging. Yeah. yeah, and with, with many, uh, among other things, uh, among many good things, some bad things like the supply chain issues and many other things. So how did you guys did, I mean, how did you do last year and especially in Q4? Because I know it's a tough time in which you require a lot of, you know, to be with full of inventory, which is what many brands lacked last year, right? Mm -hmm. And the one before. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, it, going back to you know, to what you mentioned with, with 2020 and, and COVID and all, you know, brands have really gone through a lot. Some saw incredible growth during that time. You know, if they were selling, you know, fitness gear or, you know, leisure wear, you know, or personal, um, you know, products, I mean, they saw great growth. 
brands, apparel, you know, fashion accessory brands like ourselves saw, you know, a really a huge decline in, in slowing growth. Um, people just weren't wearing belts much, you know, or pants, you know, so for a lot of the year, you know, people are at home and they're, you know, they're lounging, they're just not wearing belts and, and going to the office and, and all that stuff. So um, weddings and, and conferences and, and stuff like that. So a lot of the stuff that you normally would go to with a belt, people weren't doing in 2020. So it really slowed our growth down, which we had seen, you know, you mentioned in 5,000 fastest growing companies had that, you know, three years in a row leading up to 2020 um, and 2019 just, you know, had incredible growth. Uh, and then 2020 hit and we started 2020 really, really strong and it was looking good. And then March hit, you know, and it was just like everything just stopped that day, the day that that everything here in the U.S., you know, just um, went on lockdown the 16th of March. I think it was 16th or 18th, you know, something like that. It was right around there. And um, and it just stopped. And I was like, oh, wow, this is how is this going to turn out? I think everybody did. But um, fast forward, you know, they, like you said, it really put a lot of brands in a bad spot because, you know, we just like I'm sure a lot of people were, you know, we're trying to play catch up. We're trying to get back in the black, trying to you know, to become, you know, profitable again, um, after having to, you know, kind of, you know, dip into the reserves, you know, for, you know, getting through 2020. So, um, you know, 2021 was definitely better than 2020. And 2022 definitely uh, was, you know, was starting to get back to that kind of 2019 numbers, you know, starting to get back to that. Um, we just didn't have um, the inventory that, that we really wanted to have at that time, and, and really kind of got caught off guard by, by a handful of things. Um, and, and, but, you know, we had plenty, but we were just doing some incredible sales and, and really, um, we saw that, that a lot of the ads were hitting, um, you know, the, the metrics that we wanted them to, and, and really just, you know, push those, um, just as about as hard as we could go and in, in, in retrospect, maybe a little too hard. Um, but it, it really set us up very, very well for this year. And, uh, and, and, you know, the growth has been phenomenal, uh, this first quarter. And, and, you know, so we're really, I really, really hit the ground running and, and finally feel like, you know, we are, are much higher above that 2019 kind of momentum that, that we had even then. So, uh, so yeah, things are, things are looking good. Awesome. So, um, in a, in a previous conversation that we had, he said that you are already planning for this year's Black Fridays every Monday. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, you, you know, you've I, got to be thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for one, there's, there's a few things that, you know, for one, you have to make sure that your supplier is going to be able to produce, you know, not only what you need, you know, because we, we have orders in now. You know? I mean, we have stuff that they're working on now, um, but they're going to really need to know, okay, you know, and, and even if it's just giving them an idea of, hey, this is the type of order that we anticipate placing, you know, come, you know, a little bit later in the year, obviously, you know, we're not putting that order or that PO in, you know, next week, but, you know, in the, in the coming weeks, in the coming month, you know, need to kind of let them know, hey, this is what we're planning on so that they can start sourcing the materials and, and making sure and getting the scheduling and and knowing, you know, what they're going to have to work on, um, you know, to lead up and make sure that, you know, come, you know, October, um, you know, mid-October at the latest that that we are fully stocked, ready to go for, uh, you know, for, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and, and really even earlier. Uh, I think it's something that, you know, that a lot of brands have been doing is, is you know, and I hate it as a consumer, <laughs> you know, everybody hates to see, you know, Black Friday stuff pushed, you know, on uh, the day after uh, Halloween, you know, but um, it really, as a brand, you know, we are really having to just spread this out a little bit so that, you know, maybe have our sale uh, a little bit sooner for our existing customers that that are going to be coming back for that sale that we have every year. And, and the customers that we've gotten this year, they're going to come and, and buy for that Christmas. But then also the rest that you have of people that find you, you know, around the holidays and, and the advertising that you're doing in that fourth quarter that's working really well. So, you know, we're going to need that stock as, as, as well as, you know, additional um, for that. So really trying to trying to spread that out a little bit more this year uh, than we ever have. It's really been just kind of a mad rush on that Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And it Sometimes it just kind of breaks, you know, the fulfillment and, it, you know, and then shipping gets, you know, and then, you know, when you have that many orders, something can go wrong with, you know, with the, the stuff coming into the fulfillment center, you know, so all that stuff, and, you know, a lot of things can can go wrong when there's that much volume at one time. So trying to spread that out a little bit. Um, so yeah, you know, between getting the suppliers ready, uh, as well as us customer service, you know, making sure that we have uh, some additional help to, you know, to get us through uh, the holidays there. So yeah. How would you say your business that might be listening probably should, you know, plan or, or forecast their inventory for their business. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that, that we really, that um, was kind of a light bulb that went off last, uh, you know, last fourth quarter was that, you know, we really, 
we, you can only sell as much as you have, right? And and that's kind of where we and that seems <laughs> that seems like you know pretty rudimentary, but you know you can only sell as much as you have. So we really you know needed to kind of take a harder look at okay, what can we do per day and, and still sustain until you know because you don't want to run out, you know what I mean? And so um, you know forecasting and making sure that okay, what kind of revenue do you anticipate to make each day throughout those holidays? What what's the target? you know, revenue per day and, and can you, you know, what would be too much, you know, because there, there is such a thing. I, I didn't, I didn't really ever believe it. I thought, you know, you know, whatever, as much as you can do a day is, is good enough, but you will run out. Um, and so, you know, unless that's what you want to do, some companies they're like, Hey, I want to run out. We want to sell out. Um, but for us, you know, that, that, you know, having that stop of the cash flow just isn't ideal. And I don't think any company really wants to necessarily have the, you know, that kind of faucet turned off. So if you run out of stock, that's, that's what's going to happen. So, um, so, you know, forecasting based on what you have on hand during that time. And then when you anticipate getting more, so I think that's super important, uh, you know, to, to have a, an idea of that. Um, you know, if you know that, Hey, look, I could do everything that I can do and I would never sell too much, then, then that's awesome. And then just, you don't have to worry about that as much, but, um, but yeah, for those that, that have inventory levels that also have some growth and, and that are, you know, that are anticipating having good sales around that time, you know, it's important to know what those daily averages are that you can maintain and then know if you're hitting above or, or below it. Yeah. And for you guys, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I think it might be simpler than for other brands selling multiple product uh, types, right? Because you, you sell mm -hmm. only belt. I mean, that's a lot of yeah, Exactly. <laughs> you sell a very yep. successful product indeed, but you sell only one product type, which is belts. You sell buckles too, mm -hmm. but it's so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I mean, I don't think it's because... well, and I'll tell you if if you run out of buckles, the sales stop as well, <laughs> and we learned that too. So, and that was really what happened. We had more strap, but we ran out of buckles, and so you know, there's not a lot of new customers that are coming in just getting the strap. You know, so you're pretty much only selling to your existing. Um, so yeah, it, it gets tough. But with people that have a big, you know, a diversified, you know, catalog of SKUs, then then yeah, it, it you know, um, it is probably a little more difficult to kind of sell out of of everything uh, or for that to really, you know, the sales to kind of dry up completely like, like they would with one product. And why haven't you expand? I mean, I'm curious, uh, I, my apologies for asking, but why do you, why yeah. haven't you expand, expanded on, uh, I mean, to, to other categories that complement the, the cell? Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, of course, everybody's, everybody says that. And, and that seems like a, the logical um, way to, you know, add additional revenue. I, I think that there's, um, there's a lot to be considered in whether that dilutes a brand and, and also the customer's um, mindset of when they come to your site. So now they have these other things that they're kind of thinking about and considering and that they may spend their money on, but they're, they lose the focus, you know? So when they come to our site and we just have belts, we're just talking about belts here, you know? And so they're really focused just on the belts. If we had, um, you know, if we had wallets and, and we had, um, you know, other leather accessories, which would be a natural um, progression of us to offer. And, and I'm not saying that's out of the question. Um, but I've always kind of thought that it, you know, if we kind of stick to what we know and what we're really good at and just do that really, really well, that like, you know, we have our hands full and, and enough to do with belts and, and enough potential customers that we haven't reached. I guess the, you know, the thing that you would look at is, okay, could you get your average, you know, cart value up? Could you get your average order value up? I feel like our average order value is, is high enough that it would be really tough and, and probably not something that would be typical for them to say, okay, let me add another $35 product or something, which, I mean, that would be incredible. And if our average order value jumped $20 based on that average, you know, um, that we're talking crazy, crazy, you know, increase. But um, so I don't know, you know, maybe it's that, that we try uh, something that makes um, a lot of sense, which would be like, say a particular strap that is made in the same leather as the wallet. And we have a, you know, some kind of special, you know, either flash sale or limited edition drop for that, uh, you know, kind of collection. Um, and that pairing where you get the strap, you get the wallet and it's made out of, you know, um, a particular leather, then and that's definitely something I can see us doing. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's and talking through this with you right now, that, that might be exactly what we do. So. Yeah. So full disclosure, this episode is being recorded in late March, right? So we are, I think, mm -hmm. correct, wrong, around the corner for April's full day, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, April's full day. A lot of brands actually test ideas that day. Yeah. Because it's, yep. it's like a joke. And people, okay, yep. you know, 
more about it. And you know, it's funny. My my wife is actually gonna do something with that. We have a trap that, uh, and I guess this will this will play after. So the, you know, the, the cat's out of the bag um, by now. But it's a uh, it's a jean strap. So um, it's made out of blue jean. You know, which in our supplier sent it to us, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it just didn't just didn't really. It, it wouldn't be a great seller. I can tell you that. It's it's novel and it'd be fun for like an eighties party. It would be really cool if you were like. You know, doing the Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, uh, you know, outfit in full jean, then it would work. But um, so she's gonna introduce it on April Fools and be like, "Hey guys, we have a new strap coming out, and, and you know, here it is." And it's like, it's like a, it's a jean strap. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how maybe people are in. You know, I told her I was like, "Well, let's see what they say." <laughs> They're like, "Oh, I love it." You know, maybe we consider it. But yeah, that is you know an interesting concept to to try those ideas on on April Fools. Yeah. No, I mean. Um... I, I know a lot of brands that, you know, try to play around on that date with new concepts. Mm -hmm. test. If people were laughing and yeah. saying, what a bad idea, they, that's it. It was a joke. Yeah. But then, yeah, it was April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Please start like developing this product or, okay, we'll, we'll consider that. But it yeah. was a joke. But maybe yeah, exactly. Joke. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, if you guys like it, sure. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah but it was a joke. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I know you, you, you've been building this company, as we said before, over the last 15 years. Um, so mm -hmm. I I guess we can spend hours and hours talking about the advice you have or lessons learned, right, that you can mention for those who are behind in their career, you know, in their e-commerce career um, for, for, mm -hmm. to, to learn from you, right? But what are some of the top lessons learned do you think that they should know now? Gosh, you know, like I said, the, the one that's top of mind is, is the one that I just mentioned in, in the inventory. And that kind of comes a little bit later, you know, as you're, you're a little more well-established and you're trying to you know, keep up with demand and that kind of thing. That's, that's one of the biggest lessons that I recently learned was just like really having a grasp on what you can do so that you don't get in that position again. Um, but, you know, right now, you know, with so much, um, you know, with social and in the way that, you know, so many brands and so many people, whether it's TikTok or, or Instagram or Facebook or, you know, Reels or, or you know, YouTube shorts, you know, these platforms are allowing for brands and, and, and these people that have businesses that are small businesses to really, you know, to get exposure that really was never available, um, you know, for anybody, unless you built that audience yourself, you know, and so um, for the first time in, in, you know, really ever, it's it, you're able to really to put yourself out there and, and really get a lot of eyes on your product if you put in the work and, and have that good content. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that it's, you know, a lot of people starting now and, and that, that have businesses now need to take advantage of that and, and that virality that, that could happen um, from that. As, as far as like, you know, a lesson learned and, and stuff like that, I mean, it's, you know, I, it's, you know, I, I don't know that there's anything in particular in, in there that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning every day and, and still learning as, as it changes um, so much. And so just kind of keeping on top of those trends, keeping on top of what's working and, and what's, um, you know, giving people an advantage, um, like some of these, uh, you know, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or Reels and stuff like that, um, and putting yourself out there. So, um, so yeah, I'm not sure if that even <laughs> answered the question, no, but, um, but, you know, someone, that's just you know, some people great advice. Are hiring or have been over hiring in the last few years so i don't know what's the right head count I yeah i mean in, in that room yeah in that regard you know i think that you know doing as much as you can and this is kind of obvious to a lot of entrepreneurs out there but doing as much as you can yourself for as long as you can you know and i know that kind of you know it, it's it, a lot you have to also know when to off put that you know and i probably am guilty of of carrying some of that load a little longer than i should um, but there's things that, that have happened for us, like this, you know, just the natural success that we've had that I'm like, man, maybe that has something to do with it. You know what I mean? And maybe that that is part of it is because my attention has been put so much on, on everything, um, that, you know, and it's, it's been me driving that train that, you know, that maybe that's been part of the success. And so, um, you know, for entrepreneurs out there, I mean, I really, you know, doing as much as you can for as long as you can, but also knowing when to delegate those things that you're not an expert at those things, you know, I enjoy marketing. I enjoy, you know, that the, the concept of, of building a brand, you know what I mean? So that's my passion. Um, and, but, you know, I'm not an expert, expert Facebook ads manager, you know, so that's not going to be a, you know, something that I personally take on um, customer service. I'm really good at. And so that is something that I take on, uh, you know, a lot. Um, if I wasn't, then I would make sure that, you know, I had someone uh, and we do, you know, have people that, that, 
um, you know, can, can do that really well. So, so yeah, you know, wear the hats that, that you want to wear and that you enjoy wearing, you know, and wear those hats and, and do that really well. Um, and then figure out how to delegate, um, you know, and, and get people to, to help with the, the tasks that you're not very good at, um, and that you're not an expert at. So, yeah. Awesome. And many, I have a, one of the last questions for you, because I think this could be interesting for many brands struggling out there nowadays, uh, which is probably what's working for you guys in terms of customer acquisition and retention, mm -hmm. because that's yeah. probably something that many brands are struggling with right now. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, currently um, we're you know, spending a lot, uh, you know, on, on meta, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's really, you have to have, um, you know, the right, you know, right partners managing that to, to really get, get that return. But if, you know, when it, when it's working, it can work. And, and there's just no denying the scalability of it, of just the sheer reach. Um, so, you know, we've, we've slowly kind of turned that dial and, and it's, uh, it's been working. So, that's really, you know, on, on the acquisition side, um, you know, as well as influencer marketing, um, that's kind of, that's been our, our, our bread and butter for, for many, many years. Um, and, you know, and, and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of others doing that a lot, a lot more than we are. Um, but that's, that's definitely something to, uh, that has, has contributed to our success. Um, you know, and as far as retention, you know, that customer service is, is huge and, and just always being there, um, you know, for your customer, always getting back and, and just going above and beyond. Um, so, you know, that's like I said, you know, I, I could definitely offload the phone to someone else, but that's something I still like to do. And, and I still do answer, uh, answer it as much as I can. I'm not the only one, but, but I definitely do answer it. Um, and so that kind of thing, that rapport that you build with your customer, I think is, is so important. And I guarantee every single customer that I speak with and help and then tell that I'm the owner, you know, they are that much more of a, a super fan of the brand, uh, than, than anyone else. So, you know, if I do that each time and over the last, 15 years that I've been doing it, it, it it's built up. So um, not every brand owner can do that and not everybody wants to, um, but that customer, um, you know, just the attention to your customer service can go a long, long way. So. Yeah. I mean, the other day I talked to, uh, to another brand that it's probably, they are not where you are at right now with your brand, but they are doing great. And mm -hmm. they, they they do the same thing that you do, and I said that I I totally recommend every owner that can do this, uh, mm -hmm. to to make it happen. You know, to to get in touch with your customers because it actually doesn't take that long. You can talk to all of them or to no. the VIP. You can choose, but not talking to any. I mean, they they went beyond that, and they even have ads in which they put the the customer and speaker. They call them to say thank you, and they even tell them on the spot why they bought not only once but twice and 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 it's even funny uh, what awesome. they say yeah. you know and, they, and 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 that will give you i mean many people talking about the customer avatars and or buyers persona and i know it's really important to know your audience but how are you are you going to know who they are if you don't talk to them right exactly exactly it's it's so hard to to know even you know just through through names on a screen, you can't tell who those people are. And you know, with speaking with them, you really get a good sense of who your customer is. Um, and 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 then you can you know you can advertise them to them better. You can create new products for them better. Um, you know, all around. So, yeah, you know, if you're not speaking directly with your customer, you need to really have a, a really good line of communication with your customer service team, and and really always be asking them, what are you hearing? What are you doing? That's another reason why you know we have our returns exchanges come back to our home office, you know, so that I can see what's coming back, what's, you know, what are, what's going on and what, you know, what's, you just have my ear to the ground, you know? Um, and so I think that's important as well. And please tell me if you agree with this, uh, because we have been discussing this uh, on the show as well. And this is probably my, 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 uh, my five cents for, for everyone listening, but I would love you to validate it as well. And it's, and it's that, that the, let's say the, paid ads, uh, email marketing, and all those uh, actions matter. Of course, they matter. But nowadays, brands need to go way beyond that point. Whereas before, like many years ago, it wasn't like that. It was probably not enough, but it, they got away with that. But now, if you don't mm -hmm. go above and beyond with knowing your numbers, uh, making sure your supplier is uh, familiar with your plans to provide you with the right inventory, mm -hmm. And to 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 measure your margins, to hire the right number of people, and not go over that 
uh, Mark, and many other things. I mean, going above and beyond with your customers, like that's what matters the most right now, right? I mean, absolutely, absolutely. No, it it, de it definitely does because if if you're not and if you don't, there's another company out there that will, you know, and so. Um, you know, you really have to take care of them because people have so many options these days. You know, I mean, with with online and, and e-commerce, I mean, it used to be that you had a couple options. You wanted this or that. You had to go to the store and you had this brand or that brand. Now you have, you know, hundreds of brands, you know, within uh, particular categories, you know. And so there's um, it's really you really have to go above and beyond. You have to be a little bit different. You have to be more accessible. You have to be. Um, you know, it's, it's really just, uh, it's about building that relationship, building that community, you know, with your customers. And, um, so yeah, I, I completely agree. It's, it's, you know, it's changing for, for sure, as far as, uh, that landscape goes. And I think, you know, the authenticity, you know, of a brand, um, and, and people knowing who's behind that brand, um, is, is even more so going to, you know, be important in the coming years as, you know, the market gets flooded with a lot of, you know, direct from factory type brands and, um, you know, you don't really know where it's coming from. Is it, you know, is, is this an international product or is it, you know, here, you know, being shipped from the U S you know, how long is it going to take that kind of thing? So knowing who is behind the brand and who you're buying from, it's become, it's going to become more and more important to consumers. I, I think. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Awesome. So, um, I would like to thank you for being here. I really appreciate the time uh, talking to you. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, before we go, I, I'd love to ask you if besides all the years of experience that you have, uh, you have read any book that has helped you or many books, I don't know, uh, in your career somehow. Yeah, so, um, you know, one that, that I, I've read recently, and, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of your listeners have probably heard of it, but um, Shoe Dog, um, you know, kind of about the Phil Knight story um, with, with Nike, and, and that really... Um, growing up, you know, in the nineties, I mean, Nike was like, you know, I've always respected the brand and, and really, um, you know, what they built and what he built. Uh, and so that story is fascinating to me. Um, and it really, I just, you know, it just really was just an incredible story. And it kind of saw a lot of parallels to the struggles that he had, you know, and not to compare myself to Nike by any means, but just building a brand and starting from scratch and just that kind of gritty battling that, that he had to do for so many years to get where, where he finally did and, and the heart and soul that he poured into the product. So all that stuff really resonated with me. And it's a great read. If, if, if you haven't check it out to dog, uh, you know, Bill Knight story. So, yeah. So for everyone uh, listening or watching, uh, of course, you can find everything mentioned, including this book at uh, the DTC insider.com. Uh, you, after finding the episode, you click there and you will get all the show notes. Uh, including this book. So um, I wanted to thank you again, David, for being here. And please, before you go, uh, why don't you tell the audience where they can go to learn more about you and the company? Absolutely. So our website is ansonbelt.com, A-N-S-O-N belt.com. So check us out there. Be sure to follow us uh, on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, each week on Instagram, we do a free belt Friday giveaway. So, um, you know, you have a chance to win a belt. All you have to do is comment, like, and comment on that post. We've been doing it every Friday for going on three years now. Um, so it's it's just something that we do. It's, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get crazy exposure, um, but it's a great way for our fans. Uh, and every week we have, you know, the same few hundred fans, you know, commenting on this post and, and I love it. So um, great way for me to interact with our, our community, our fans. And uh, so yeah, check us out. Instagram, Facebook at Anson Belt um, and AnsonBelt.com. Awesome. Thank you, David. You've been great. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. Take care. And uh, yeah, happy to come back on anytime.